Come on. Come on. Hey. Julio. Yeah. yeah. That was better. My name is Chris Sawyer, I'm Clinical Director at ICR Vets in Lone Head. I'm a general practice vet who has an interest in orthopaedics but is not an orthopaedic specialist. So today we're going to talk a bit about stem cells and osteoarthritis in dogs. So can we maybe just start by you explaining a little bit about how big a problem osteoarthritis in dogs is? Osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis is, a, is a massive problem in dogs. I think it's one of the most common diseases, if you call it a disease, or most common conditions that we get in dogs now. Um, particularly larger dogs, so large breed dogs like Labradors and things like that, but across the whole range of species. And it's one of the biggest issues that kind of limits exercise and the ability to have good quality of life. Excellent. And so, um, before the advent of stem cell therapy, what options exist for the treatment of osteoarthritis? What alternatives do you routinely use? We use a lot of different alternatives, both medication-wise and therapy-wise. So we use anti-inflammatories and other painkillers. We also use a lot of acupuncture and laser therapy and things like that, which are also good adjuncts. But most of these things are all targeted at reducing the levels of pain or perception of pain or reducing inflammation in the joint. Okay. And so uh, how did you hear about stem cells and what brought this to your attention? We're quite close to Biobest, it's just up the road to us, and it happened that one of our clients was uh, a neighbour of somebody who worked at Biobest and so therefore heard about it and approached us. Initially, I had heard about stem cell therapy before via a good friend who had done equine work before, but uh, this is the first time I'd used it myself in dogs. Excellent. So, um, first you have to select the sampling site, so what are the uh, key considerations from the veterinary perspective about how you actually access the sample. I was wanting to get somewhere where it's going to be not too traumatic or painful for the dog, an easy area to get a, a sample from, but still give a decent amount of tissue for the stem cell culture to be done from. So uh, several sites were suggested and I chose to go post scapular and the adipose tissue behind the shoulder blade on the flank, which is very easy to access. And I did the procedure just under sedation with local anaesthetic, um, very quick and simple procedure and the dog recovered very quickly and had no issues afterwards. Uh, how did you assess the joint? What did you find and what considerations do you have when assessing whether a dog would be an appropriate case for stem cell treatment? So a lot of assessment was done prior to actually going for stem cell treatment. This dog in particular had actually already had x-rays and scans and actually had surgery on the elbow for a fragmented coronoid process. So it was a dog we knew had quite marked elbow dysplasia and quite marked elbow arthritis. Still quite a young dog was at the stage where the arthritis was very markedly limiting the ability to exercise and causing quite a lot of pain despite medication and surgery already having been performed. So would you anticipate any difficulties in sampling from dogs related to health, breed and if so would this add to any difficulties in accessing any tissue? No more difficulties in than any other anaesthetic procedure and as I said this is a fairly simple procedure, it's not a, a, a deep or complicated procedure so therefore doing it under sedation worked very well so it's a very mild procedure, a very quick procedure as well to get the samples that we needed so other than the standard considerations of any dog undergoing a general anaesthetic or sedation there's no particular um, contraindications or anything in a dog with arthritis. So. Prior to, this is your first case, so before you actually uh, took on this case, so what were your, and as far as you can tell, the owner's expectations as what the outcome might be? The owner obviously had spoken to somebody who was involved in stem cell and probably was biased towards it and very hopeful that it would work. I don't know whether they genuinely believed it would work, but they were hoping for a difference. I was open to trying it with a slight scepticism as to whether it was going to make any difference at all. Um, any of the more new therapies, it's hard to be quite as objective sometimes in terms of whether they make a difference or not. And I was happy to give it a go because the owner was happy to give it a go and the dog was clearly struggling, but I wasn't expecting too much, to be fair to say. Okay. And um, so if you just tell us that the cells went away, were cultured and then came back to you. And um, so if you just tell us a little bit about um, the process for injecting the cells and if there are any difficulties associated with injecting directly into joints, which I understand is something that's not particularly frequently done. Yes. 
Intraartic injections are not as difficult as people think they are. Um, I think that's my experience having now done quite a few. Um, there's plenty of things, resources where you can learn about them, where you can speak to an orthopedic vet if you're not sure. Um, the areas you're hitting are fairly small, but the landmarks are very obvious and it's very easy to tell whether you are in the right place or not because you're either in the joint or you're not and it's either easy to inject or not. Um, and the only challenge you've got, I think, is in a, a very arthritic joint, there's less space to aim at. So probably doing them a little bit earlier is, is a better option. But even with um, in the case of the dog that I did recently, who had quite arthritic elbows, I was still able to get into the joint space with a needle and get a decent volume of stem cells injected in there. Excellent. So um, after you've injected this, um, how would you then score or measure the difference in mobility uh, after the cells have been injected, and what time frame would you leave before you would start to assess after? So, so we do use pain scores and and things like that for assessing mobility, but I think genuinely the biggest consideration is the owner's perception. Um, I think the owner knows their dog better than anybody else, and they're the best person to judge their ability to go for walks, the level of lameness that they see, the willingness to exercise, um, and we would expect them to be the best assessment, but I would still do my own assessment to want to see whether there's a lameness that I can see at walk and trot and examining the dog. Time scale wise, um, a few weeks seems to be about the time scale. You, know, you want to give it some time, you're not expecting it to happen overnight, but at the same time, you want to see an improvement within a few weeks. And then, um, is there any exclusion criteria where you would assess a dog and you would suggest that it might not be an appropriate case for injecting cell into a joint? Nothing specifically related to the joint. It is still a relatively invasive procedure in terms of it's a surgical procedure going into a sterile area. So I think there are other, op other options that you would maybe try first, but the dogs who are at the stage where other options are not enough, or if they're a young dog and people are wanting to preemptively reduce the progression or improve the joints, then I think at that point it's something you'd really want to consider. So um, in the case of Juno, we've had some Good feedback. How do you feel overall from sort of start to finish the procedure went in terms of what you thought it might have been before you actually had the, the opportunity to become involved? Very well. Um, the sampling and injecting was very straightforward. Sampling is just taking a sample of fat, so it's not a hard thing to do for any vet with any surgical skill. And intraarticular injections, I know from past experience, are not as difficult as people think they are. Um, the process of BioBS made it very smooth in terms of delivering the um, samples on the day when I needed them with very clear instructions about how to use the samples and how to handle the samples and the dog clinically improved very quickly.